Let's see who we can have a word with. Bristol Zoo. Here we are, standing outside. We've just been talking about you, actually. Dan, we've been talking about your dinosaurs, the ones that you've got. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we're all about dinosaurs this year, um, ironically. But no, not around anymore, unfortunately. But you still, we still have some um, giant animatronic ones at the zoo you can come and see. That's cool, yeah. So, and they're huge, aren't they? And they spit in all sorts. Absolutely huge. The one that spits is probably, it was again, the movies have got a bit carried away again, you see. So in the movie, there's the one with the big frill that spits the poison stuff over everyone. But in reality, they've looked at the fossil record and they can't find any evidence that this dinosaur spitted anything. So it's just that Hollywood again getting a bit carried away, unfortunately. A little bit of creative license. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yes. Um, so tell me, in your role as education team leader, being here at Festival of Nature, this sort of thing is right up your street, isn't it? Oh, completely. And this is exactly how I started in uh, conservation education. I volunteered at Festival of Nature about, gosh, seven, eight years ago. And since then, I've kind of managed to worm my way into kind of a, a full-time job, one that I absolutely love. This is, and this is so important. People can come along, they can speak to experts, they can get hands-on with some really, really exciting stuff. They can hear about the really important conservation environmental work that's going on. So, and we're really happy that we can come along every year and support it. Yeah. I wonder actually, it's a really good point because there'll be lots of people who might like to do the kind of job that you're doing. Um, what opportunities are there? Where would you go to maybe get started? So there's loads of great websites out there which can point you in the right direction. Um, Bristol Zoo's got a really good volunteer program as well. Actually, it was after Festival of Nature volunteering here that I then started volunteering at the zoo. Um, and it's a great opportunity to get some proper hands-on experience, whether it's whether you want to do animal work, whether you want to do educational work. We have a huge loads of roles at the zoo that you can get involved with. Um, but we're very lucky the fact that the um, Festival of Nature also has something going on in Bath, so you can get a great experience doing two different sites and gain lots of experience kind of doing some really exciting. That's true. Obviously, we're in Bristol and singing the praises of everything here. Um, but what is going on in Bath? Because I know there's like a really rich programme of events following the Avon, what's happening in Canesham, Bat's Eye View out to Bath. Absolutely. Unfortunately, I don't know what's going on in Bath because unfortunately we can't make the Bath one this year. We're focusing on Bristol this year, so I'm not too sure what they've got planned for Bath, but I'm sure it's just as exciting what they've got planned today. What I'll do is I'll look at my notes. Uh, I've got extensive notes on everything that's going on, so I'll be able to tell you that. But I mean, there's an abundance of things to talk about here this weekend. So Dan, thank you. What are you off to go and do now? Are you manning a particular stand? Uh, I'm probably just going to wade back in there and see what's to be done, have some good conversations, talk about some more dinosaurs, all that kind of stuff. Is there a particular conservation program that you're working on at the zoo? Um, there's not one that we're directly involved with in the education team. Um, we're very lucky at the zoo that we have a huge variety of projects that we work on. One that I am really interested in at the moment is actually involving the, um, the desertus wolf spider, which is on Madeira. It's a very, very rare spider, and we're so far the only collection, the only zoo in, in the world that have these animals in captivity. We've never been kept in captivity before, don't know how they breed, don't know how they lay eggs, don't know how long they keep their eggs. So it's a really, really exciting project. And we do have two females, I think, with egg sacs at the moment. So this is really, really exciting stuff. It's fascinating. I tell you what, I mean, I, I don't know the half of the work that Bristol Zoo Gardens does, but I can remember um, a couple of years back getting the chance to go to one of the flower shows. It might have been Hampton Court. I can't quite remember. And I went into a marquee and I saw there was a big Bristol Zoo Garden yes. stand there and, and lots of pieces of work that they were doing, growing different flowers and the co seed collections yes. that they had. No, no idea about any of that. No, it's really nice. I mean, that's the thing. We are Bristol Zoo gardens and a lot of the time the garden bit tends to get a bit forgot but so we've got this um community plant project going on with calendula which is that's what it was the yellow flower the pot marigolds and so it's really exciting because what we've been able to do is actually go out to the community to the local growers to pick to hobbyists to schools give them some of the seeds they grow the plants on and then when the seeds when the when the plants set seed they come back to zoo for the following year so we've got this a great seed collection going on in the community which is really really exciting and lots of stories with it as well which i which was another thing that i really liked about it yes absolutely everyone's when it comes to gardening though everyone's got their own special technique how to do it how much water in the sun in the shade but this, that's why it's so that's why i like gardening i suppose because it's you can really put your own individual kind of twist on things all right, Dan, thank you very much. Thank you for letting me collar you just as you were minding your own business, frankly. 
Um, I'm Laura Rawlings. I'm here hosting some of the live coverage on the big screen here at the Festival of Nature. Today and tomorrow, there's a whole team of us doing this. And as Dan mentioned, actually, lots of volunteers who help to make the Festival of Nature happen. Um, I just want to mention that you can share on social media some of the pictures that you might have. So if you've tried something, maybe for the very first time, you might have seen us when we were talking about tasting some of the bugs, which probably are the future, really, in terms of how we might get increasing amounts of our protein. Um, that would be an example if you're sampling bugs, if you're having a go at presenting, if you're looking into some of the telescopes, maybe trying some of the artwork, picking up your tree from the Woodland Trust, whatever it might be please do tell other people about this because that helps to keep this going and growing for future years. So if you search Festival of Nature, at Fest of Nature, or on Twitter, hashtag F-O-N, also at BBC Earth as well. Um, we'd really appreciate it.